Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to disassemble, repair a power jack, and reassemble a Samsung NP QX411 laptop. Now if you're not comfortable doing any soldering work and you need your power jack repaired, please feel free to find me at timscomputerfix.net and you can ship me your laptop and I'll be glad to uh, repair it for you and ship it back to you. Now as you can see here, I've already taken the back cover off of this laptop and basically it's pretty simple. You just take out all the screws on the back case and just pull it right off. It comes right off. Nothing too difficult about that. The only thing you have to remove is the hard drive and the back shell. And that exposes the power jack shown right here and that's what we are going to be replacing. I will show you how to reassemble the back cover at the end of the video. But once you have your back cover off, the next step you should do here is just remove these antenna wires that are going to your Wi-Fi card. Now it's a good idea to take note where these wires are routed. So taking pictures as you go for this step would be highly advised. There's another, uh, there's another plug here you have to undo and kind of pull it back out of its trace. There's not too many wires really to kind of move out of the way and ribbon cables. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward real easy to get the motherboard out so just whatever is connected to the board you just basically want to disconnect and just keep track of where the wires were ran and what in which plugs or which wires are plugged into where on the motherboard take out the RAM got a couple sticks of RAM on this board we take out and uh, there's also uh, another cable down here at the bottom I think that's the video cable and then we have this you don't have to, but I remove this uh, this ribbon cable here just just so I don't you know know that I won't damage it or just stays out of my way. So we'll remove that also. And then there's another ribbon cable over here that's kind of hiding out. We'll get out it out the way, no problems. Another one down here at the bottom. So yeah, once you have everything cleared off the board, everything unplugged, all ribbon cables out of the way, we can start to remove the. Uh, four or five screws here that hold the motherboard down that'll be pretty obvious too which ones those are like I say pretty straightforward easy to remove this board but the one thing we got to be careful of is don't just pull straight up on this board when you get the screws loose because the the keyboard ribbon cable is attached underneath this board so again be very careful about pulling this up you'll see here we go nice and gently and you'll be able to see the ribbon cable to the keyboard this sitting underneath this motherboard. Gently lift it up and there's our ribbon cable. We don't want to snatch this board up. You could easily break the retention clip holding this ribbon cable in place. So we just reach underneath and disengage the clip and the we'll, ribbon cable comes off and now we can remove the board. There's our good look at our broken power jack there. You can see some cracks in it. It's kind of a different power jack from other uh, brands of computers that Samsung started to do, but uh, I'll show you here how, we, how I go about removing this jack. Now, I don't consider myself a professional at soldering, but uh, this is just my method. Please feel free to use any method you would like to use. But we're noticing here, we're going to have a little bit of a closer look at this, but there are some components here underneath where we need, where we're going to be desoldering this power jack. There are some very small components that we're going to have to protect. I'm going to be using hot air and that could easily blow these surface mounted components off the board if we don't protect them. It's very important to protect these small components. Don't just start applying heat. These components are very close to where the power jack is. So let's just have a little bit of a closer look here at these components. You can see here there's just a few of them, handful of them, but there's one very small one here and then you can see the other two or three here and these are the feet here that we're going to be desoldering top right and left sides of the jack. So that's going to be where we're going to be applying heat. So let's just protect these little small components with some with some heat tape, reflective tape, whatever you want to call them, foil tape. So as you notice, my method is I'll overlap the feet that I need to desolder 
because what I want to do is is be sure that I have enough play or slack in the tape to cover what I need to cover. I want to just make sure there's every possibility that I don't blow heat underneath the tape because we that happens also. You can blow heat by accident underneath the tape and the surface mounted components can still get hot enough to come off and they'll actually stick to that tape when you take it off. We don't want that. So this is just my method. I, I'll go a little further than I need to when putting the tape down and then I'll kind of push the tape back to expose my working area and kind of flatten that tape out to protect those components. So once I have a once I have once I'm happy with my working area here I'll be sure to go around and just like I say flatten that tape out and be sure it's all sticking to the board well and we'll just protect this little network jack here on this side this plastic so we'll protect that and now we're going to go around and just add a bit of solder to each one of the feet this is going to help disperse the heat this is going to help actually transfer heat to the existing solder so we'll just we'll add a bit of solder to each one of these feet that we're desoldering here and that always helps in transferring the heat to to help molten the existing solder and then of course flux that doesn't matter how neat we are with this added solder just as long as we have some added to the existing solder so once we have the flux you'll see now we'll hit up our hot air gun and you'll see that flux start to melt and activate and this is in real time I have not edited this part any so this is real time we've added the heat the flux is activating and now you're going to start seeing the solder molten and that's when I'm going to use my solder sucker to desolder these feet now with this heat gun we want to go straight down on the jack we don't want to go at any kind of an angle because we don't want to blow heat underneath that tape and that's really important so in real time you can see how quick this stuff melted and now we can start to use our solder sucker we want to I want to be sure we get every bit of solder out of these slots like so take your time sometimes some parts of it aren't molten as fast but we'll get there there's another one another one and you can see there they're starting to clear out so once you get to the point to where you have obviously removed most of that solder we can take our heat off and use a pair of pliers to kind of finish the job might be a, might have to add a little bit more heat just to get the jack separated but there we go and look how clean those eyelets are there that's what we're looking for that's going to make for a very easy reinstall of our new jack now we just want to clean our area up. This is isopropyl alcohol. We want to clean clean all that extra flux off and everything and get it looking get it looking good and clean before we add our new jack, dry it off. Now we can put our put our jack into place here. It fits right in. Now again, this is my method. We'll just go ahead and add some balls of solder to each lead. About as much as what I'm showing here. Make sure none of that solder is bleeding over to any of the other leads or components, of course. that's the perfect amount there so like I say just small beads of solder you need just about this much on each one because what we're going to do is we're going to double back 
and we're going to get our heat gun and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna melt these balls of solder so it, so they draw down into those eyelets there so again flux you want to use flux because that helps the solder to molten go molten and here comes the heat and you can see the solder activate there and we're going to go off camera a bit here had a little bit of a camera problem but you will get the idea you see the flux start to molten there and you can still see that see it kind of melt and go down into the eyelets like so and I'm gonna we take our heat off now and I'm gonna kind of show you here this is what you should be looking like once we clean that up it's gonna look really good but that's what you want your solder balls to look like once after it's molten and gone down on your eyelet so we can see the other small components here are just fine they've been protected They're, they haven't moved any so we can just clean this board up and we can go ahead and start our reassembly process of course there's that ribbon cable to the keyboard that we have to put into place before we set our motherboard down get that locked into place get the motherboard set down and get all these wires and ribbon cables out of the way before we set it down and then we can start the process of rerouting all of our cables once we screw the motherboard down of course do that real quick put our screws back where they go like so and then we can get all of our wires and ribbon cables back where they belong one over here got a little ribbon cable to the USB jacks on this side put it into place there's our little double-sided ribbon cable that we took off you put it back into place snap it in no problem then we'll be looking at a little small ribbon cable don't forget about over here on this side and all of our little all of our little plugs and let me get our cables routed back again and we can hook back up our wireless cables and the battery one of the last things you want to do because we don't want to short anything out so we'll get it into place screw it down like so and get these antenna wires there we go we can get our back cover on feed our SATA cable through the back cover and get the back cover in place once we do that we can get all the screws put in for around the bottom cover like so fairly simple process here then we have the we have the DVD drive the DVD ROM drive that goes and slides right into place here once that's done put in the screw to secure it into place great next is the hard drive Get it put into place and then we have our memory modules that need to be set back in slide and snap in like so there's one there's two our back cover and now we can flip flip over open it up plug in our charging port go ahead and plug in our power adapter and we'll see if we get power we're looking for it and yes as you can see here we're now charging there's our charging light that's what we want to see from that point we can go ahead power it up see the power button there and then we can see activity on the screen so that's how it's done like I say everybody if you're not comfortable with doing soldering work Please contact me. Find me at my site at timscomputerfix.net. I hope this helps anybody trying to do a power jet repair or at least looking to take, take apart this particular model Samsung laptop. Thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe to my feed. Comments always help. I appreciate it.
So until next time, everyone, see you soon.